nice to be back on channel 11 and uh, you know we have uh, we have a very interesting topic tonight and uh, should I do the bug poop now or should I save that for next show uh, is that on your mind now Marty um it's a timely topic it's it is very timely and I think uh, you know, there's some important things that should be brought out on this, you know, which is, which is, uh, the, you know, there's a number of things that all come together in the series of calculations we're going to be, we're going to be going over tonight. And, uh, okay, the thing is, you know, I'm washing my car about once a week, and uh, it seems like I got about half a millimeter of that stuff uh, on my car by the time I get to the car wash, eh? And, and uh, we always start with sap from the trees, and and, and you know now the city tells us it's, it's bug poop. All right, so it's it's bug poop. Now we can live with it, but but it's an awful lot of bug poop. You know, it's an awful lot. And uh, and and you know what struck me is uh, you know on, when you look at geological time scales, if if this uh, bug thing is a global phenomenon, then uh, you know if I get half a millimeter in in, in a week. You know, let's give me one millimeter for the whole summer of that stuff, uh, in terms of just a deposit on the surface of the earth. And you know, it, it doesn't take a long time for this thing to start adding up on us. Um, you know, give, give it one millimeter over this summer and, you know, add it to the radius of the planet. And, uh, you know, another millimeter, you know, it's a centimeter in 10 years. Well, it's it's it's, it's a, a meter, meter in a thousand. It's years. a meter in a thousand years. Okay, okay big deal. A meter in a thousand. And you know, now you start thinking. Okay, and now you always heard in, in that they dig for fossils and dig for archaeological. And you wonder why are they digging? I mean, not, not, we're not burying stuff. So why do they have to dig for stuff? So I figure, well, maybe it's it's the bugs. Maybe it's the bugs. You know, we don't know. But uh, you know, then you start adding it up. Okay, you get, you know, a meter for a thousand years. You know, but a thousand years now, now it turns out that's peanuts now. Now, now you go a million years, now it's a thousand meters, that's a kilometer. But, but a million years is a drop in the bucket, a drop in the bucket in, in, in geological time. Man is about Man five is, million. Well, right? you know, they talk about those sort of half-eight men. That, you know, if you go back five million years, you're talking about these little chimpanzee kind of things. But, uh, you know, a million years... Well, history is is, is six thousand years tops, but uh, well, it's, so we know cavemen you know, didn't write uh, yeah. books, but they were still men. Yeah. I, I I consider man a million years. That's the figure I carry in my mind, and you know, uh, you know, a very interesting topic while we're on it is how long ago in history did the races become differentiated, and and I'd like to suggest that it must have been a very long time ago, and, and here's what I think. When you look at the 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 separation between the Asiatic people and the North American native people, which we uh, relate to the cutoff of the Bering Straits and the Ice Ages 10,000 or 20,000 years ago. We like to think of it as being on that time scale. And yet in those 20,000 years, I mean, the, the differentiation between the Oriental race and, and the American race has is, is, is been very slight. They're, they're obviously have, have a close kinship. So when you look at how little those races have diverged, it makes you wonder how long ago black and white must have separated and uh, to, to have, have become so different. It, uh, it, almost, uh, it almost boggles the mind. Um, and while we're, while we're on, on, on that subject, another thing that's always bothered me is uh, it seems to be a funny thing, like the Polynesian islands are populated by people you know, like, sort of like Filipinos of that general kind of coloring, uh, whereas Australia is populated by black people. The Aborigines of Australia are black. Are they, aren't they just sort of like redskins, like we have in, you know, Central America? I think they have black curly hair. Black. Isn't that right, Shane? They're not exactly black. I mean, their coloring is different from black people. It's, it's paler, and yeah. uh, they've got sort of funny blonde hair. Blonde or That's strange it. orange or brown That's hair. Right. It's different from black. But they're not uh, those kind of Polynesians, are they? No, no, that's right. They're, how, how they're not black either. They're, they're totally different. So I wonder how the Polynesians managed to spread to all those tiny little islands and they never managed to hit Australia. I mean, Tahiti and Hawaii, there. I mean, across the seven seas there. But they didn't manage to uh, take over Australia, did they? 
That's a, that's a puzzle to me. <coughs> bless you, Excuse Neil. Me. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> now, do the Aboriginals have round eyes? Uh, uh, North American Indians? Uh, no, in the Australian Aborigines, do they have round eyes or sort of slant a little? Uh, I don't think they're slanted. Okay. I thought they were sort of like, uh, a lot like those kind of uh, Bushmen of the Kalahari, you know? Sort of the same like those African kind of... Uh... No. Okay, so no. I'm out to no. lunch. Okay, no. but bug, bugs I know about. Okay. Now, bugs I've done the calculation on. So, shall we get back to bugs? Go back to bugs. Okay, now, uh, now the thing is, when you start adding it up and we said a million years, we're already a kilometer deep in bug poop, okay? Now, when you go to the geological time scale that the bugs have existed for a billion years, if they've existed for a year, they've existed for a billion years. Now that that would be a thousand kilometers, okay, which is which is outrageous, okay. Now, so something's got to give. Okay, the calculation is wrong. Now we're not depositing a millimeter per year of this stuff and leaving it there. It's it's just not happening. And uh, so now we gotta we gotta think about it. And uh, the angle I came up with is that is that if you look at um, all biological sources of sedimentation that you know the bugs is something that's biologically generated as sediment and if we look at all biological sources combined in terms of what they deposit on the surface how much can it be now you look at my grass clippings okay my grass clippings if they just sat there and and piled up they'd be a millimeter per year I mean the stuff from the trees and everything is there's a lot of stuff I mean if that's Bio, bio stuff was accumulated, it would just be, you know, piling high. And so the question is, uh, how much of that stuff uh, stays on the ground and how much of it is burned off or re-decays into the air or is digested by animal life and, and uh, re... Okay, so the whole key is carbon. Carbon is the whole key to the whole thing. Now, it's a funny thing that I think many people are aware of it's, it's kind of like hydroponics. You can plant a seed in something that's almost only water, and it'll grow into a big plant. Now, there's, there's all kinds of mass to the plant, but what, you're only giving it water, but it, the plant is not only water. And most of the bulk of, of, of the material of the plant, now, now chemically, you're talking carbohydrates or whatever, cellulose, I don't know, you, you're talking atoms like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Okay, now, the, Nitrogen and oxygen are available from the air. You know, the, the hydrogen's available from water. Now, the carbon is only available from animals. No, the plants don't eat animals. Animals eat plants. But we put carbon in the air, and plants live in Oh, yeah, from, yeah, from us, from the carbon air, yeah. Dioxide. We yeah. Ex exhale it into the air. We may not be the major source of carbon dioxide, as far as plants are concerned. We... Uh, we put CO2 into the air, the plants use it, but the point is that the carbon, which makes up, you know, wood, is from the air. So the plants are, have the ability, through the photosynthetic process, of incorporating carbon into their uh, material. Okay, so carbon is the key. How much carbon, you know, are these bugs generating, which they're collecting from, from the air, and uh, through the well, it's the trees that are collecting the carbon, okay, and the bugs are eating it and then dropping it to the ground, okay. So how much is there? And it's it's a funny thing, it's a funny calculation because because there's not all that much carbon in the air. There's not all that much carbon in the air. The atmosphere as a whole is ten kilometers deep. Now, what do we mean when we say ten kilometers? We mean we mean that if the air was as dense as it is, as it is at ground zero, now it's got a certain density at ground zero, and it gets up when it gets less and less dense as you go higher up, you see. So it never peters out completely, but the point is, if, it, if, it, if you calculate on the basis that it had the same density at ground zero, it would go up 10 kilometers. It's an easy calculation to do. Too easy for my viewers. Okay, now. But there it is. Okay, now. Now the point is here, 10 kilometers, that's, that's a, a gas type density. Now, if you could condense that into solid material, the way biological entities, you know, take in atoms from the air and condense it into solid trees, okay. What is the density difference between gases and solids? Okay, and, and this, is, this is, you know, when you say that gases and solids have a different density, okay. 
a gas can exist at any density in pressure and temperature, but, but in our particular planetary conditions, you're looking at a ratio of about, anybody guess? Between 10 to the 3 and 10 to the 6. I'll say 10 to the 3. Not bad. Well, now Sharon doesn't have to oh. guess because I already said Neil's pretty. It's, it's about 1,000 to 1, 10 to the 3. Okay. Now, if a, if a kilogram of water takes up 1 liter, then a kilogram of air takes up 1,000 liters, which is 1 cubic meter. It's 1,000 to 1. But the point is it's 1,000 to 1. Now, what I'm saying is if you took that 10-kilometer blanket of air and condensed it down to solid, it's only 10 meters thick. Only 10 meters thick. And the CO2, the CO2 in the air is a very, very trace percentage. It's a very trace percentage, okay? It's much less than 1%. It's much less than 1%. Now, now J.D. Is, is questioning my, my facts on here, but look, you got 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, 1% argon. <laughs> he says he's, he, you now he's trying to back out. He says he's talking about something else. Okay, but I know he's questioning me. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, and, uh, but the point is, you know, it's, it's much less than 1%. So even if you said 1%, okay, 1% of 10 meters is, uh, is uh, 10 centimeters. Okay, 4 inches, okay. And it's, it's, it's less than a tenth of 1%. Okay, so at the outside, at the very outside, if you could condense all of the carbon in the air into solid matter, you could deposit only one centimeter on the surface of the planet. Say that again? You see, if you could take all the carbon which is in the air right now and condense it into salt, and, okay, it's a ballpark thing. Now, you know that biological material is not 100% carbon, okay? But it's, you know, it's half carbon, okay, in terms of its solid content. Yeah, there's the moisture content, but let's just evaporate off the moisture and talk the solid residue, okay? took all the carbon in the atmosphere, I'm saying it's probably less than, less than a centimeter if you, could, if you could lay it flat as in solid form, in powdered graphite or whatever you want. Well, what percentage of uh, a plant by, by weight, by density, is carbon? Well, it's half, but if I said it was all carbon, you know, within the accuracy of the calculations I want to do tonight, I wouldn't be misleading anyone. So it was two centimeters, or it was half a centimeter. I don't know what it is, but it's a very interesting fact. It's a very interesting fact. We're going to come back to this fact later. I think we should do something. You see what I'm saying is maybe, maybe plants oh. are themselves 2% carbon. No, no, I plants are mostly carbon. Okay. I mean, look, that's what you're burning when, yeah. when you burn a tree, okay? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the carbohydrates or cellulose or whatever it is. It's seeds with H's on it. You know, carbon. Carbohydrates, yeah. yeah. That's a, oh. Okay, there's water. Okay, there's a lot of water in, in, in them. But when you talk about the solid residue, you know, the basic a chemical constituent in all biological things, it's like on Star Trek, where they talk about <coughs> carbon-based life forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was under the impression that it's more than not, more than 50% water. Like, I thought people yeah, yeah, are 90%. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's yeah. right. But I'm saying if you take the solid residue. Okay. Yeah, just the solid residue. So that solid residue might be less than 5 or 10% of the mass of the plant. Um, I, I don't know if that affects your calculations. Yeah. I, you see, yeah, you're telling us yeah. that with all the carbon that we've got yeah. to play with, it turns out it's a pretty skinny layer on the ground. Yeah. And what we're saying is maybe because plants, even though, okay, they all need carbon in them, yeah. the nose is running on TV, it's terrible. <laughs> um, you got a sleeve, Neil. Yeah. Give it away. <laughs> Go on. Now, what the hell yeah, was I done. saying? Is that m maybe all these big plants and big trees, really a small part of them is carbon. As important as carbon is to them, a small part by weight or by number of molecules is, is carbon. Yeah, I would and say there's a lot of carbon in those trees. <laughs> in my, in my considered Yeah, I think you're right. I, no, just, just, you open up one of those biochemistry books and you look at all the molecules and there's little C's everywhere. Point is, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of carbon there, but if you took all the carbon from the atmosphere, I mean, it, it wouldn't amount to much. You, you, you convert it to solid form. So it's, it's a paradox. But uh, let's come back to this, uh, let's come back to this story because we always like to do a song on the show. And uh, what do we got for today? Uh, we're going to do that to... Uh, Laurie Morgan. Laurie Morgan song. Radio hit for uh, Laurie Morgan. Yeah, that's and, uh, late, I think. T of A. So, uh, let's see how good this sounds. So, who wants to keep... One, two, three, ba-ding, do, 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 do. No, but I have to do one.
two, one, two. You were surprised. Yeah, right. <laughs> you didn't think you would see me kicking up my heels, cleaning up this town ever since you left me. Learned a couple of new dances, cast a couple of glances. I'm on a big roll now, except for Monday, which was never good anyway. Tuesday, I get a little sideways. Wednesday, I feel better just for fun. Thursday and Friday take too long before I know it. Saturday's gone, but it's Sunday now, and you can bet that I'm all right. Sounds good in the studio here. And, uh, sometimes they sound great at home, and I think we got it. We, we, we you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun to put these together. I'm telling you. And uh, sometimes they don't come out quite right, but uh, son of a gun, I hope that one did. I think it did. And uh, you know, those uh, fat nylon strings aren't quite as fast as those uh, steel ones. You yeah, know, sometimes yeah. Play on. The uh Sharon, it was important to Sharon that I get that uh, part there. You know, I can sort of do it on the old uh, nylon string, but... You'd well, like to have them steel strings, wouldn't you, on yeah, that, uh, see, uh, that Stratocaster? Our loyal, uh, our loyal viewers have seen me play this uh, brown solid body uh, Fender Stratocaster uh, for two years now, and uh, well, some guys broke into my basement and uh, walked away with it about a month ago. And I know many people from all different walks of life in the city of Winnipeg are viewers of the show, so... You know, you've seen it on Find TV. that Stratocaster. It's a, it's a brown Fender Strat Stratocaster. What is brown it? Fender Stratocaster. What? Chocolate brown, cream pick guard. Yeah. Uh, says Fender Stratocaster yeah. up there. The back of the neck is sort of sanded down. It's a funny dark color yeah. compared to the honey blonde color up here at the, uh, at the uh, head of the uh, guitar. So keep, keep your eyes open for that Yeah, I'm guitar. offering a reward for it, but I know that I don't need to motivate the, your viewers, yeah. Marty, with a reward. <laughs> I almost feel embarrassed to have said it. Yeah. Thanks, folks. So, uh, yeah, and uh, recent radio hit for Lori Morgan there. Um, I wonder how much time we got left to, co to co complete this bug topic. Probably about 10 minutes, eh? Yeah, seven minutes. Now, the interesting thing here is when you start arguing about this, you wonder, I mean, am I getting this right? Have I got it right? Am I doing it right? Okay, so what I'm saying is there's various ways you can check you're on the right track. And one of the things that I, I want to relate this to is to say, if we vaporized uh, a bunch of, uh, you know, carbon stuff and put in the atmosphere, you know, they say what, what we're doing in terms of human energy consumption is going to cause the greenhouse effect and this and that. We're going to double the CO2 content of the atmosphere uh, in the next, you know, 30 years or whatever. But now, you know, see, what I can do is I can say <laughs> that the content of the CO2 that I calculated is one centimeter across the planet. So. So now I'm going to say, what would it take to double that in terms of what we're paying in terms of energy cost? And, and this is how I do it. I want to see, what if we took that much, you know, coal, this much spread over the whole planet and vaporized it? Um, 
How much money would that cost us? Because we know, you see what I'm saying. Now, this, this is how the calculation goes. You say, let's say there's 5 billion people on, on the Earth, and we're each spending $100 per person per year burning fossil fuels. Okay, and I don't think we're out of line. I don't think I'm out of line on that. Now, now that's, uh, that's uh, $500 billion a year that we're putting into the sky in terms of fossil fuel. Now, you see, oil costs 50 cents a liter. So half a buck a liter, and I said we're putting half a trillion dollars into this thing. So that means we're putting a trillion liters of oil a year equivalent. Now, biological matter, I don't care if it's oil, I don't care if it's wood or coal or whatever. I'm saying pound for pound it's got about the same amount of carbon. I'm not all that far off either. Okay. So we're talking about a, a trillion liters. A trillion liters. Now, um, trillion. Yeah, I'm going to be way out to lunch on this thing. How many zeros in a trillion? It must be at least 12. Okay. 12, yeah. Now, let's get into meters cubed. So it's going to be a billion meters cubed. A billion meters cubed. Now, it's going to be all right, because now i got nine zeros. Now, we're saying a billion meters cubed. Now, that's going to be a thousand by a thousand by a thousand. So I'm talking about one cubic kilometer of hydrocarbon material represents what we're putting in every year. Now I'm going to spread that cubic kilometer over the surface of the planet. Let's just quickly go to the board to get this thing right. I want to take a cubic kilometer and spread it over the surface of the planet. And here's the disk of the planet, and we say it's like 13,000 kilometers across. We used to say 8,000 miles in when I was in school, and, and I knew what it was. Now I'm 13,000 kilometers. Okay, 13 by 13, if I just take this square, which represents, you know, Oh, you know, and one thing we always like to do, whether we have the time or not, is show the fact that here is California and South America, the <laughs> River, Yucatan, Peninsula, Florida, St. Lawrence River, Gulf of Mexico, Bay of this, Greenland. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Now, we say it's 13 by 13 is 169,000 uh, square kilometers, and we take 80% of that because I want to get rid of those things, which is actually times pi over 4, which is about 80%. So I'm saying like it's 125 million square kilometers that you see in front of you. But then I say, what's the actual surface area of the planet? And it's four times that much, because that's a fact of spheres. It's four times that much. So the surface area of the planet is 500 million square kilometers. OK. Now I had a cubic a cubic kilometer of oil, and I want to spread that over the whole surface of the planet. So the thickness of that, the thickness of that layer is going to be one five hundred millionth of, of the size of the cube. Are you with me on that? Okay, a five, one five hundred millionth. So we said, yeah, okay, I've got five hundred million kilometers, and I've got a one kilometer cube, and I want to spread it even. Okay, so it's a five hundred millionth. Okay. And, uh, so a billion over five hundred million, right? Uh, yeah, have you got it, Neil? I think it's just two. What? Meters. No. That's too big. No, no, it's a million over 500 million. It's a one five hundredth of a meter. It's two millimeters. Okay. It's two millimeters thick. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a, a thousand meters, a thousand meters uh, high divided by a million. Whoa. It's a thousand by a thousand by a thousand meters, right? Yeah. And I'm dividing it by 500 million meters. No, no, I got well, yeah. Well, <laughs> so what okay. are you using? Square meters? Uh, square kilometers. I'm spreading over this many square kilometers. Mm. 500 million. So first I got to spread it over a million. So I got it down to a millimeter already. Now when I take another 500 times, I got it down to uh, uh, two microns. You know, I think I may be wrong in this, but right now I've got two microns, which is 0 0.002 millimeters. 2 microns equals 0 0.002 millimeters. Yeah. You know, and I could be wrong on this thing. I had a, I had a cube, 500 million square kilometers. Two minutes left in the show. Okay, that's about a layer of bug poop is what I'm saying. So, I mean, if, you know, the point is, all the stuff we're, we're putting in one year, okay, give it, give it 100 years, give it 100 years, and it's going to be 0.2 millimeters which is, uh, and I said, I said it was a centimeter that they had in the air already. It's not adding up, is it? But you see, these things have to add up. These things have to add up.
see, because what, what they tell me, what they tell me is the amount, the amount of oil that we're burning and putting into the sky is, is enough that in a hundred years we're going to double the amount. <laughs> see, and, and, and it's, it's got to work. It's got to work. We're going to double the amount of CO2 in the air. Now, I had 500 million square kilometers as the surface area of the planet. And, and we know that's about right because Canada is used to, we say, 4,000 million square kilometers. It must be 1,000 square kilometers. How many square miles in Canada? A million square miles in Canada. Okay, 500 million is not, not out of lunch. 500 million square kilometers, that's about the surface of the planet. Because Canada is 3,000 miles by 3,000 miles. It's millions and millions of square things, okay? And I had a one kilometer cube of oil. I divided it over 500 million square kilometers, okay? So when I take a millionth of it, is a million millimeters in a kilometer. Then 500 times down. Geez, it's a pretty thin layer. It's, it's a two micron layer. All that oil, if you vaporize it, was only going to be a two micron. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. And look, I've butchered this calculation. But, you know, I don't see if we're only, if we're only putting in that much oil into the sky. It's going to take us, at that rate, it's going to take us 500 years just to put a millimeter in. And, and I think, uh, I think we are putting a lot of CO2 into the sky, but not, not by this calculation. Still, things have to add up. Someday we'll figure this out. But uh, let's, just, let's just end the show. And, uh, oh, how about this? Oh, I got lots of songs, but uh, can't think of one now. We're going to do that one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like the Hank Williams song. Don't ask. Hank, why do you drink? And Hank, why do you go smoke? Why must you live out the song that you wrote? Over and over, everybody makes my predictions. If I get so.